another tutorial video. Today's one is going to be sort of creating backgrounds using the Nouveau coloured pencils, the classic coloured pencils, and this little tutorial is in conjunction with Tonic Craft Kit number 67, which is the Follow Your Dream rainbow box that's got some gorgeous rainbow aspects to it that we're going to be using to decorate the cards. I'm not actually going to finish the cards in this video, I'm going to show you the techniques and then show you the finished cards that I created uh, with the backgrounds that I'm going to show you. But I wanted to show ways of using your coloured pencils with some of the Nouveau products from the kit. So we're going to do this kind of resist sort of technique with the Nouveau Glitter Marker, the Mica Mist and the um, Crystal Drops using the coloured pencils to give that resist technique. And then I'm also going to show you a couple of ideas just by taping your coloured pencils together to give you different... Um, patterns as well for creating your backgrounds too. So these are all of the bits and pieces that we're getting in this month's craft kit and if you want to see that in more depth then go and check out my unboxing video from yesterday. But for today's tutorial video we're going to work with the glitter marker, the mica mist, the nouveau drops and the coloured pencils and we're going to create these resist kind of backgrounds. So for these, the, I, I would say the one that works the best is the Nouveau Glitter Marker, but I wanted to try it with all of the different ones to show you kind of um, the results that you can get. So um, I'm only going to work on little bits of card to show you this just because I've already finished the cards and I don't really need to make a second one of each of them. But I really wanted to show you the kind of techniques and we're working with the brilliantly vibrant set of classic coloured pencils, um, which is the one we're getting in the kit, but it's also fantastic because it has the white pencil in there, which is kind of like the main one for this resist technique, although we are going to use some of the colours as well. And also, when you're working with your coloured pencils, you want to make sure you've got a decent sharpener. So um, I've just got this Prismacolor one um, and it it doesn't damage your pencils when it sh sharpens them. It sharpens them really nicely so that you can, um, you know, get a nice point on there without breaking the lead. So, and it even works with a triangular barrel as well, which is great. So, for the first technique, I'm going to show you... I'll do them in the order that I did them originally. I went with the mica mist first. So what we're going to do is... Um, I had done this background for this card, so I knew I wanted to use the hearts from the die set along with some of the rainbow pieces, so I went for a heart background. It's kind of subtle because the mica mist is such a subtle colour, but it does give um, a ghostly resist kind of pattern. So what we're going to do is we're literally just going to draw some hearts in white and you want to go over them a few times and you can see in person you can see where you've gone I don't know if you can see when I'm drawing it but you can see it there because they're like a waxy kind of consistency that's what's going to work to give our resist technique so all we're going to do is just draw some hearts on here and we don't have to just leave it as hearts we can write stuff as well so it can be like um you know, like one of those invisible ink kind of things too. You could even do this for like um, your grandkid or your godkid to play with as well. So I'm going to put a hidden word in there too. You can probably tell what I wrote. But I'm going to put a, a hidden word in there as well and drew, draw a few more hearts on the bottom of this. Just so that we can see how this kind of um, resist technique works. So... That is what I have drawn on there. You can just about see what it is. Um, and if we add our Nouveau Mica Mist over the top, now you can definitely, you can spray this if you want to, or you, if um, if you've accidentally clogged your sprayer, if you've had your Mica Mist for quite a long time or something, um, you don't have to spray it. I know this one isn't clogged because I did use it the other day, but if I use it now, I'm going to have to then go and clean it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip some out onto this because actually for this technique you want to sort of spread it out thinner and we're going to sort of um, dab it off with a bit of kitchen roll because otherwise that mica is just going to sit on top of all of our coloured pencil that we've put on there but we actually want it to resist it so we want more of the, the colour to sort of be around here and you can actually do a couple of applications of this as well if maybe you take too much off the first time you can come back in and put a little bit more colour on there as well if you want to so you can see at the moment all it looks like is just a mess of uh, mica mist on there but if we come back in and sort of like buff it in a little bit we're kind of removing that mica from the top of our resist technique on there 
so you can actually see again what it says on there. You can come back in, deepen it up a little bit. If you have some of the maybe the slightly darker colours of your mica mist, it might work a little bit more prominently, but it gives like a subtle kind of effect. And with one of the other or two of the other techniques I'm going to show you, I actually used coloured uh, pencils as well as the white, so you don't have to just stick to the white pencil as the resist, you can put coloured ones under there. Obviously it's not much, it's not more of like a, a resist technique, you're just adding extra hearts and things on there, but that is one version of this technique and that is using the Nouveau Mica Mist to be the product that goes over the top of the resist with the white pencil and that is the card that I made with this background. So just using some of the leftovers from the rainbows, putting the sentiment across the centre and putting some of those hearts on there. But you can definitely just use this small piece as well if you do a test piece. Or maybe you like to keep little um, techniques and stuff. You, maybe you've got like a swatch book or something that you keep little techniques like this right on the back what you did um, so you know for future reference it might be quite a nice way of keeping track of some of these techniques as well so uh, that is the first version of it which actually I feel like maybe that worked better than my original background maybe I pressed harder with the white pencil or something but that is um, the first one using the mica mists then the next version I did was going with sunshine designs because I knew there was this half sunshine in the die set so I thought well I might as well try and draw a few sunshine designs and I decided to pick out the white, the yellow and the orange for this so I'm literally going to do exactly the same thing but I'm going to vary the size of my sunshines so I'm going to draw large white sunshines Oh, and actually, I have a tip for doing the rays. If you do them at the four quarters of a, a clock or a compass and then put two in the centre of each of them, you can get all of your sunshines looking pretty similar then. Um, so we're going to go much larger white sunshines. And then we'll go um, slightly smaller orange sunshines. I'll just do a couple of each of them. Um, so Because the orange is going to show up now. And obviously the... Nouveau Glitter Marker is going to resist the orange, but it's not going to be much of a resist kind of technique because we're not protecting the cardstock underneath, we're just showing off the colour of the pencil. So it's not quite a resist for the coloured pencil versions, but it's mostly just a resist for the white pencil because we're sort of, well, we're not, I suppose we're not really protecting the white card, are we? It just kind of looks like we are because we used a white pencil, but I'm still classing it as a resist technique. So we're going to just draw a few orange sunshines on here and then we can go in with a few yellow sunshines as well. Now because we're using a yellow uh, glitter marker, the yellow is very subtle but you can still see them in there so I do think it's worth still adding little yellow sunshines in there as well. So we're mostly just going to make the uh, white sunshines appear when we add the Nouveau Glitter Drops, on oh, Nouveau Glitter Drops, Nouveau Glitter Marker over the top. But it's just another different technique that you might not have uh, thought to try before. Maybe you've got some coloured pencils that you've had for years. They might work for this kind of thing, I'm not sure. So you can just give them a go and, you know, see what you think. You can also do this kind of thing with a candle. Um, it's not as precise because a candle is much bigger. I suppose you could um, do it with, like... Um, a white wax crayon as well that would work too obviously doing it with the pencils you get more accuracy because the pencils are uh, like narrower they've got that narrower um, lead on them so it's a little bit more accurate so with the glitter marker this is the lemon drizzle one from the kit I'm shaking it to make sure all of the ink is mixed up and then I'm just going to press it onto my glass cutting mat to make a little puddle come out of the bottom of it because I want some of that beautiful sparkly ink. Sometimes a, hot, a puddle doesn't come out. This is my original pen so it's quite old so I, there's a possibility that I've used up most of the ink that is in there. But we can just keep pressing or scribbling with it just to get some of the colour out of there. There we go, got a little puddle now. Then we can take some water. I'm just going to spray a little bit of water onto there. And then we can take our paintbrush, let's go with this one, mix it up and then paint it over the top. And because this is more of like a watercolour medium, that pencil should sort of pop through more easily than with the mica spray. We should see the white ones, you can see it sort of appearing down there as well. We can still go over with some kitchen roll to, you know, make sure there's not too much sparkle sitting on top of the white pencil as well. 
but we can just go over the top of the whole thing just to add colour to our background. And I mean, you don't have to do the coloured pencil thing at all. This is just a nice way of creating a background using your glitter markers. Maybe you've got minimal supplies or you want to um, challenge yourself to use minimal supplies. Maybe you just don't like sprays because um, they get too messy. You can do something similar that you might do with a Nouveau Sparkle spray or with a, a mica spray, but you can do it with the Nouveau glitter markers and you're not making quite so much mess then. But that is the resist kind of technique with the pencils using the Nouveau glitter marker over the top. And again, you can do your splattering with your Nouveau glitter markers as well. So if we get a little bit more um, gorgeous sparkly ink out of this, if we don't water it down quite so much, we can get a more intense sparkle splatter on here as well. Probably do need a tiny bit more water than I've got there, but we can just make sort of more more of an intense sparkle splatter than we had for the watercolouring in the background and you can add that over the top as well. So that's the second resist kind of technique. And then the final one uh, for the resist techniques, once I just clean my paintbrush out, um, it doesn't work brilliantly as like a resist because the, I guess the Nouveau drops kind of more they're a little bit more translucent when you water them down. They're not quite as like dark and purple as you see them in the bottle. They're a little bit more translucent than that. So it doesn't quite work as well as the other two techniques. But I still wanted to show it to you anyway because it is a different um, idea that you might not have seen before. Um, so I did use white on my original. The white really doesn't show up that much. But I used the white, the pink and the purple. So I'll just do the same thing again and we can see what the results are. But the white, because it is so light when you water it down, you know it's a really light kind of effect you really don't notice the white but you will notice when I watercolour over the top that a little bit of that purple pigment moves a little bit and it gives a really nice kind of soft effect on there as well so let's just do a few white orb kind of pieces on here just to show that we've put some white in there and then for the purple I was just drawing some flowers on there I'm not sure why I went for flowers when I knew I was going to put a cloud on it but I just decided that a flower would be something easy for anybody to kind of doodle. So you literally just do a circle and then do loads of little semicircles around it to get a um, kind of like a childlike flower. But it gives a, a quirkier kind of design. So it works quite nicely. So let's do three purple flowers. And then we'll bring some pink in as well with some more sort of like dotty, swirly kind of things for the pink. And we'll do a few small purple dots as well, because that's what I did on the original one. So, I mean, these kind of backgrounds, they do look a little bit more childish than maybe what I would usually go for, but they could just be cool techniques for you to use with your children or grandchildren um, as well. You know, just as a cool technique, they're using some of your supplies, but um, you're getting some, like, decent backgrounds and things out of them. So it could just be a nice way of doing that as well. So for this one, we've got our kind of pattern drawn on there. We're going to take our crushed grape Nouveau Drops, and we're just going to put a little puddle out onto... Oh, got an air bubble in there. We're going to put a little puddle out onto our glass mat. So a, a rather large Nouveau drops worth, probably. And then spray it with a little bit of water. And then if you don't want to uh, get all of the Nouveau drops caught up in the ferrule of your brush, we're going to use a flat brush like this. If you don't want it getting all caught up in here, use your palette knife to mix this together. Um, so that you don't have to sort of mix with your paintbrush. You can see it goes a little bit milky because of whatever's in the Nouveau drops. Um, when you add water to it, it goes a little bit milky, but once it dries, you can see it does give that purple colour back again. So we can just mix that up and then take our paintbrush and paint it over the top. And you can see it is a really light colour, so I did actually do a couple of layers on the original one. And you can see a little bit of that purple kind of blends out a little bit as well. Um, and gives a really nice softer kind of effect too. So you can do 
um, a background by painting with your Nouveau drops. If you want a really glossy finish, it's a nice way of adding a glossy finish. You could even um, do this with your clear Nouveau drops and create like um, a tiled kind of look if you've done some sort of stamping in the background or something. Um, so there's so many different ways of using your Nouveau drops and I don't think I've really shown this in a video before. Um, but if you want deeper colour, you can, you know, add a bit more of your drops onto there, maybe water it down less and add a little bit more um, depth. This is why you get a lot of the brush strokes in there, because you're trying to sort of build up the um, the drops on the surface of this. But you can kind of do whatever you want, really. You could use a stippling brush and get a lot of stippling pattern in there. Or you can use a flat brush, a round brush, anything you want to, really, um, just to give... A different kind of effect to your background and you can see actually that purple is blending out it's almost got a bit of pink in it as well but you can just about see some of the white in there and it does give a different kind of result and I just really wanted to show you um, this technique with the three other Nouveau products in the kit even though this one's not as successful as the others you might think that this is a cool technique for something else you want to try as well so I'll just clean all of this up and then I'll come back and show you those two ideas of uh, taping your pencils together to give you different patterns as well I just had a quick interlude of a game effect in the garden with pumpkin, but I think I was just going to say to you um, how to do these two backgrounds and tape your pencils together. So I thought I'd pick out some different colour combinations. So I'm thinking for this kind of one that I did, I'm thinking I'm going to go orange, pink and turquoise as a different colour combination. Now because the pencils are triangular, you can kind of slot them into each other um, to get them to be nice and firm in the right position. And what you want to do is bash them down so they're all lined up with their leads on the end and then take a bit of washi tape and then you can just place this around the centers of them to secure them all together you can just hold them together if you want to but I just find it's easier if you've got a little bit of washi tape around them and then literally all you're going to do is make sure those ends are all sort of in line with each other and then you're just going to press them all onto your cardstock and just go up and down and depending on how much pressure you're putting on how sharp the leads are um, all that kind of thing you're going to get different sort of results like here some of these were a little bit more blunt when I got to this portion and they're a little bit wider um, but you can do whatever you like really you can always do like weird squiggly patterns with them as well and you just get like a triple kind of effect with them so you can do all sorts of different designs um, and it's just a different way of using your coloured pencils to kind of create some sort of background for your cards as well. You can do like dotty kind of effects. That pink is really not uh, wanting to draw that much. But um, maybe I'm just holding it at the wrong angle. But um, yeah, you can do like dotty kind of effects. You can do all sorts of scribbly kind of effects with them as well. And so that is uh, taping them all together in a line. To use them and then I thought I would do a different another different color combination for showing you how to do the swirly kind of technique as well so I'll just use the same bit of um, washi tape because I might as well the good thing is you can do this a few times um, you know with different configurations and the same piece of washi tape so that was sort of doing them in a line and then again because of their triangular barrel you can actually get them pretty close together to do them in a triangular or a cluster kind of design. Again you want to um, make sure all of those leads are as evenly as possible so you're not butting up the bottoms of them to be even, you're butting up the leads of them to be even and then again you can just tape your tape all the way around there. Again you can just hold them like this but I find it's easier with a little bit of tape on there and we're just going to make sure that they're all at a good length. You can sort of push them down if you haven't quite got them at the right length because I feel like that purple one is a little bit too there we go, that's better. So I've gone purple, green and brown as a different colour combination for this. I do really like that orange, turquoise and pink, but I thought purple, green and brown is a very different colour combination to the blue, green and yellow. So my brown pencil is not playing ball, so we're going to go with the black. We're going to make it more of a Halloween <laughs> colour theme and go with the... Actually, we could go with the orange, couldn't we? Because I know the orange is really good. So we'll go with the orange and um, butt them all together in the cluster and so this is really going to be Halloween-y kind of colours but this could be a very cool smoky kind of background for Halloween actually so we're going to go like this kind of design you can go really close together and um, some of it is skipping but that gives a, a different kind of design I feel like the purple is not quite 
down far enough. Um, but yeah, you can do all sorts of different designs with these. Um, you can go more of like um, just a swirly spiral kind of design. Again, depending on how you're putting your pressure on them, depends on which one is touching the paper more or which one is going to come out with more of the colour as well. Um, but you can do all sorts of different like swirly sort of designs with them and I just think it's a really cool different way of using your coloured pencils rather than to just colour in it's just some background techniques with them as well so we've got uh, taping them together in a cluster to get more of that kind of look or taping them together linearly to get more of this kind of look and you can create different cards using the elements from the um, kit number 67 die set as well to add your little rainbows and stuff on there too. I explain more about how I got more colours in my rainbow in yesterday's unboxing video too if you want to see that in more detail. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video looking at ways of doing your backgrounds with your Nouveau Classic coloured pencils and I reckon you could um, also bring in a lot of these ideas with your watercolour pencils as well and then add water to them as well. I know the resist technique is more for your uh, classic coloured pencils but these kind of techniques if you did them with your watercolour pencils and then um, you know like followed some of the lines with your uh, like a damp paintbrush you could then create more of like a painterly look because this does look a little bit kind of like a child has scribbled on your background um, but you definitely could if you use watercolour pencils drag it out with a little bit of water and create a different kind of effect with that as well. So I really hope you found um, this tutorial video interesting. I was kind of struggling with what tutorial to do with the Nouveau items that were in this month's Tonic Craft Kit, but I thought, well, that I don't often reach for coloured pencils, so I thought maybe this was the perfect opportunity to do a coloured pencil background kind of tutorial. So really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!